Hi, it's Rod. And this one's called Make Jesus Your Boss. So, I was thinking of a scripture. It said that Abraham went out not knowing where he was going. And it's like God's trying to teach me just to live in the now and not know what's going to happen in the future. It's like when I think of what is God's will for my life, I think about, well, whatever he's telling me to do now. So you got to wake up in the morning and not know what you're supposed to do today for God's kingdom. We're supposed to be God's kingdom builders. We're supposed to be letting Jesus do the work through us. So the way I build God's kingdom is I try to let Jesus do what he wants to do through me. And then his kingdom gets built. I try to build a kingdom. It's not going to work. If Jesus seeks to build God's kingdom through me, it works. So it's like we got to wake up in the morning. It's like we got to go over to the our telephone or whatever. And call up our boss, Jesus, and ask him what he wants us to do to build his kingdom on the earth today. It's like, uh, well, I'm not going to try to do anything until I call my boss and find out what he wants me to do. And just do what he tells me to do. Most people on earth are just trying to build their own little selfish kingdom with Satan, which ends in nothing in hell forever after they die. <laughs> But uh, if we want to work with Jesus, our boss, today, and do what he says for us to do, like Jesus said, my sheep, hear my voice, I know them, they follow me. My workers, hear my voice, I know them, they follow me. Then we'll build God's kingdom. It's like I'm building my judgment day today. I'm building my career in heaven today. <laughs> if I choose to be a good and faithful servant of God, I get great rewards. If I choose to be a good and faithful servant of God, I can get a great career in heaven. And that's the place that matters for a career, not just on earth. Well, the career on earth is submitting to God and obeying whatever he wants us to do to build his kingdom, letting Jesus live through us. That's our work here on the earth, and that can involve Bible study, it can involve prayer, it can involve preaching. It can involve doing loving things for others. It can involve worshiping God, etc. So it's almost like you got to take out a blank piece of paper and say, call your boss Jesus and start getting some direction about what he wants you to do in the earth to build the kingdom of God. It's like I'll take a blank piece of paper. I'll just say, God, what are, what's the most important things for me to be doing? And just start writing them down. Now, I may not get to the everything on the list in one day or something, but... Uh, at least it's there to look at sometimes. If my boss Jesus told me these are important things to do, I better call him up and see if he wants me doing anything on this list here. <laughs> to keep your mind focused on what he, what direction he's wanting you to go in. Like Abraham, God told him to go out not knowing where he was going. you got to wake up in the morning saying, have no preconceived plans. <laughs> You might do something, you might not do something, you might have a hundred things on your mind. You're waiting for to hear the voice of Jesus say, this is what I want you to do now, get busy doing it, before you make a move, not guessing at it. The Bible says to pray always, and that uh, we're supposed to be hearing his voice and then following him. We're not supposed to be doing our own thing and trying to get Jesus to join in with us and building our own kingdom or something, <laughs> like a genie. A lot of people have a wrong kind of Jesus. Paul talked about another Jesus. It's sort of like a genie Jesus. They want to do their own fleshly will. And they want to boss Jesus around, trying to get him to help him to build it or something. Instead, we need to be sort of like a Noah. We need to ask God what he wants us to do and then get busy doing it if it's to build an ark like Noah. But that's what you got to do. If it's to live in slavery like Joseph, that's what you got to do. God had a plan for Joseph in slavery to work with the evil king to try to save lives. 
uh, God might call us to work with sort of like an evil government in the future, this Antichrist, to try to save lives. If we'll be obedient to God now, he'll be able to raise us up to do things later. If we do good work for his kingdom now, he'll even bring us into greater things for his kingdom later. So, that's what I'm saying, that uh, it's like you have to pick up the phone and call your boss, Jesus, and ask him, what do you want to do now, Jesus, or what do you want me to do? I'm your employee, you're my boss. And wait for that direction from your boss, Jesus. And then get busy doing it. If he tells you to build an ark, build an ark. If he tells you to work with an evil pharaoh of Egypt, work with an evil pharaoh of Egypt like Joseph or Moses. If he tells you to die on a cross, die on a cross like Jesus. Or if he tells you to do things that get you greatly persecuted like Paul, then do them. If he tells you to be stoned to death like Stephen, be stoned to death like Stephen. If he says, go into a lion's den or a fiery furnace, you got to go into a lion's den and fiery furnace. And not back down in fear. If he tells you to do it, he'll give you the power to do it. So what's my boss Jesus telling me to do today? Well, it's sort of like you're trying to get ready for a, a changing future. <laughs> like Noah. It's like God saying, I got to punish these wicked people soon. I want you to try to prepare for that now. <laughs> so it's sort of like I think of my apartment like a bunker or something. I, I try to get it ready. That uh, if there's anything I need still, you have to go buy it now because it's not going to be around in the future. And not to love the world and the things of the world if... Uh, you have to leave and go someplace else. If that's what your boss Jesus is telling you, move or something, then you got to move. Like Abraham, going out and not really knowing why, but the voice of God is telling him to do it. Or building an ark like Noah, and not really knowing fully why, but God's telling you to do it. So in the days of Noah, boss God was telling Noah, go build an ark. Put some animals in it, your family in it, because I got to punish the wicked. And so if God didn't punish those wicked people, I wouldn't be alive and breathing today. <laughs> they would have murdered each other. The wicked people would have murdered Noah and his family. There'd be nobody left alive. But because of God's mercy and love, he allowed a, a cleansing of that wicked world and allowed Noah and his family and the a animals to begin a new kind of existence on earth which brought forth a nation of Israel which brought forth Jesus Christ coming to the earth and dying on the cross for mankind's sins which allowed me to be alive today and have some kind of a Christian love experience in the earth trying to stop the evil or something now like a church of God, of Christianity type thing but uh, like the Bible says in the end times it gets worse and worse and worse with a wicked world and an antichrist world and you gotta the best, like I say the best way to prepare is not just food and money and stuff like that it's a good relationship with God <laughs> if you don't have a very good relationship with God you gotta work on that now it's like that could be part of uh, God's kingdom building. Building your own faith in God greater. Building your own obedience to God greater so that you can better handle what's coming. It's like I got to learn truth, meditate on truth, understand from the Bible what happens in judgment times, and understand how God can help you through it. Get rid of fear. Get rid of anger, get rid of lust for the things of the world and put in love for God and love for others instead. So if I have to give people advice, how do you prepare for the difficult times coming? It could be economic collapse, famine, plague, um, rioting, that's starting up. World War Three, that could be starting up soon. And uh, people are just getting wickeder because they've abandoned God in the past. It's like uh, 
since World War II, people maybe learned a lesson about needing God back in World War II, but they kind of forgot about it after about 80 years. And it's time for World War III now, because they get so wicked. But God can help you through a wicked land. God can help you through World War III. You can dance with Jesus around World War III because he controls it. So you don't have to let any of this stuff bother you. It's like I had a vision in a church service last week. It was like I sat at this table by myself because I was just trying to see what a church was like. And I could see, like, God the Father, Jesus the Son, the Holy Spirit sitting at the table with me, and angels. And I thought, well, uh, I'm not alone. <laughs> I got a, a gang from heaven with me. And then when I was doing some worship music, um, it's like I could sense that there was this great big sort of giant behind me. It's like Father God or something. And I looked up like a little kid and I seen his face looking down at me and he was smiling. <laughs> and I felt like this little kid with my big daddy God when I was worshiping. And then I was getting this sort of vision of, you know how maybe a father would look at a little baby and make faces and smile at it and stuff like that. It was like Father God was doing that to me. <laughs> and uh, it's a very awesome experience to feel the presence of God with you and that he's very pleased with what you're choosing to do. So um, if we talk to our boss, Jesus, and he tells us to do some things, could be make a truth teaching, it could be pray, it could uh, be doing the dishes or whatever, giving the little kid a drink of water or something. And we do it. We can understand he's very pleased with people that choose to obey him. He delights in his bride. He delights in his good children. And he doesn't want us just listening to Satan all negative all the time. God doesn't love you, and you're never doing good enough or something. He wants us to hear God's voice and maybe have visions or dreams of how awesome God is to help us to understand that he's with us, and he's loving, he's in control, and there's nothing to fear or worry about, and he can make us happy too. <laughs> he says he wants to... Pour out his Holy Spirit into us, which is filled with love, joy, and peace. He says he wants us to draw close to him, and in his presence is a fullness of joy. He says, trust in me, and you can have perfect peace of mind. But it's up to us. Well, we have to learn spiritual warfare. Understand the devil's trying to lie to us. Listen to what God's voice is saying. It's like we've got two telephones, Satan's phone and God's phone or Jesus' phone. If we pick up Satan's phone, he's lying to us with negative thoughts and everything. If we pick up Jesus' phone, he's trying to tell us, keep up the good work, I'll help you through it, don't be afraid. <laughs> and that's what we have to do. Listen to God's voice or Jesus' voice and resist the devil's voice. Because if we listen to the devil's voice, we'll forget about what Jesus or God's voice is. That's why it's important to get into the Word, <laughs> pray, be close to God, want to do His will. He'll speak to you if you want to do His will. You won't hear his voice if you don't want to do as well. And then you have to repent to your sin and try to return back to God and throw down Satan's phone and pick up Jesus' phone and ask boss Jesus what he wants you to do and get busy doing it if you want to be successful again. Stop working for boss Satan and start working for boss Jesus. Stop listening to Satan's voice and start listening to Jesus' voice. He'll tell you to read the Bible. He'll tell you to Pray, he'll teach you truth from the Bible as you read it, and he'll speak in prayer about what he wants you to do, if you want to do this. So you have to feel like Jesus is your boss. You have to feel like he can tell me what to do, and he can give me the power to do it. And if there's judgment times coming on the wicked, i got to get my relationship with God in better shape. <laughs> And trust that if there's a problem with food in the future, there's nothing too difficult for him to do. Boss Jesus feeds his employees. He takes good care of his employees. Father God takes good care of his children. Jesus takes good care of his bride. I could be in the desert for 40 years. Jesus could still feed me. Jesus could feed 5,000. Um, God could make a widow's jar of oil and flour never run out.
I can go out not knowing where I'm going as long as Jesus is telling me to go out. It's like stepping out of the boat, not knowing whether you can walk on the water. But once you do it, you find out, yeah, he told me to walk on the water. He gave me the power to do it. So whatever Jesus is telling us to do, he can give us the power to do it. So he wants us to try to let him live in us. He wants us to try to let him do good, loving things through us, which can involve trying to teach truth like this or pray for somebody. Or if you're a parent, take care of your children. Or if you're a church leader, take care of your church, that type of stuff. But we live in a very wicked world with not very good churches to go to. But God's still got a plan for you. He may be trying to prepare you to be a home church leader or something in the future. When everything's collapsing, a few people might want to get more serious about obeying God. Then you can have some kind of a home book of Acts church or something. But now in times of prosperity, most people aren't interested in that. So God's got things for us to do. It could be reading the Bible, studying it. It could be making some truth teachings to teach other people what he's taught us in the past that we could share with them in the future or something. So that's a bit about uh, make Jesus your boss. <laughs>